Welcome to St. Ursula Church this evening. Please stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today, as we come together to celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we also have with us a young lady who will receive, be receiving Jesus for the first time in communion, uh, Kateri Lehman, actually an old friend of mine. And she's only about that old, so, but it's good to see you again and your family. Let us pause at the outset, reflect upon goodness to each and every one of us, but the times we have sinned, let us seek his mercy and compassion. You came to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you plead for us at the Father's right hand. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice, your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved, and in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, 
his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull, out, pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them up in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to, parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all other evildoers. They will throw them into a fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, with that, happy First Communion Day. It seems kind of shocking to hear such a, a, a gospel passage where we're hearing about bad things, but it's not all bad. Jesus is telling us that there are things in this world that happen that are bad, some things that are challenging, some things that are not good for us, but there's a lot of things that are good for us. And we have to take a look at our lives and take a look at the world and see how we are fulfilling God's commandment of building up the kingdom. But today, the introduction to this parable should wake us up to the reality of the evil one in our midst. The specific action of the enemy in this parable is disturbing. And of course, the evil one is the devil. I believe it was uh, Mark Twain who said, the greatest trick the devil ever pay, uh, played on human beings was convincing them that he doesn't exist. The devil is real. The devil, devil will try to persuade us to follow him and not the Lord. One thing else we need to remember, the devil doesn't want us. He just does not want us to want God. So imagine if you were in this story. Imagine if you were the farmer who worked very hard sowing the seed throughout your field. Then if you awoke to hear the news that weeds had been sown also, you might be quite saddened, disappointed, and probably very angry. This parable is about the Son of God. Jesus is the one who has sown the good seed of his word and watered that seed with his precious blood. But the evil one, the devil, has also been at work trying to undermine the work of the Lord. Again, if this story about you, uh, think about this story once again. If you are the farmer in this story, it would be hard to refrain from anger and the desire for revenge. But the truth is that Jesus, as the divine sower, 
does not allow the evil one to steal his peace. Instead, he has allowed this action of the evil one to remain for a time. But in the end, the works of, the e of evil will be destroyed and burned in the unquenchable fire. What's also interesting is that Jesus does not root out all evil in our world here and now. According to the parable, he refrains so that the good fruit of the kingdom will not be negatively affected. In other words, this parable reveals to us the interesting truth that the weeds are all around us. That is, the evil alive in our world, but it cannot affect our growth in virtue and our entrance to the kingdom of heaven. We may have to encounter, encounter evil challenging things on a daily basis and find ourselves surrounded by it at times. But our Lord's willingness to allow evil for now is a clear sign that he knows it cannot affect our growth in virtue if we do not let it. Maybe we need to take some time to reflect upon the reality of evil in our world. We know it's there. We've seen it. We've probably even tasted it or experienced it. It's essential that we name our evil and name the evil in the world and the activity for what it is. But evil cannot ultimately affect you. The evil one, despite his malice attacks, will ultimately will be defeated. Reflect upon the hope that this truth brings and renew your trust in the power of God today. And in doing so, we are overcoming the evil one. Let us begin by standing and professing our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the Spirit who always intercedes for us in ways beyond our power, let us turn to the Lord with our prayers. That baptized Christians everywhere, whatever their vocation in life, may be committed to transforming the world with the light of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for the governments and peoples of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in public office, may their commitment to protect the God-given rights to which every human being is entitled, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That married couples may find the wisdom and the courage to support one another, helping the other to grow and develop their talents, to become all that God wants them to be. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those serving in the armed forces, in law enforcement, emergency responders, for those in health care, for the continued growth of peace and freedom in troubled parts of our world, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence in our streets and a respect for all people, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead may purify our brothers and sisters, our departed brothers and sisters, of their sins, 
especially Monsignor Art Bastris, priest of the Archdiocese of Baltimore. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For Jay Robertson, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. In a special way, I ask you to remember in your prayers uh, our deacon, Chris Pinto, who was in an accident le yesterday, but he's doing okay. He, will, he is in shock trauma. He had his ankles worked on today, uh, but he is doing well. We pray for him and his recovery. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. As you hear our prayers, may we always hear you ever more clearly and be faithful to your call alone. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion the varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice of your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that a people formed as one in the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of eternal salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Archbishop, and all the clergy and faithful, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver, deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your divine will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we have been doing for our first communicants, I'd invite Kateri and her family to come by way of the center aisle to receive communion and return to the pews by way of your side aisles. And then everyone else, once they have finished, follow the directions of our greeters and go by, by way of the side aisles and return to your pews by way of the center aisle.
For those who cannot receive communion at this time, I offer you this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, congratulations, Kateri. Good job. The Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. in your